rejoined by a friend of the show. It's been a while. Uh, comedian David Hunt. Can I call you comedian? Are you still doing that? You can. I am. I'm still doing that. All right. So welcome back to Hard Park. And there's a lot of stuff to talk about. <laughs> uh, <laughs> there's too. There's too much to talk Mr. about, Mr. California. Uh, but I'm going to bring the mm-hmm. bring the the listeners into. We're right in the middle of a conversation, and they're just not going to hear the right. first part of it. And guys, I'm sorry, you're just not going to hear the first part of it. Uh, but you know, car sponsorships and doing all the car show stuff. You know, 2017, 2018, 2019. You know, I ran the circuit because. When you get a sponsor, they're like, hey, you need to do photos and make sure you include us on every hashtag and take event photo, you know, take event pictures. And so that's the exchange. That's the value exchange. And so when I got done with that and all my sponsorships dried up, you know, I would still say thank you to the people, but I would post less and less because I no longer had that obligation. And then eventually, right. you know, I phased the social media kind of off cars. I mean, it's still a car. I mean, it's a podcast, right? It's not an automotive, automotive podcast. But this is why you don't see picture after picture after picture of the cars. You, unfortunately, people are stuck with pictures of me and me just random poses and random video Fine. clips from conversations like this. So anyway, yeah. So that's what's going on. That's why you don't kind of get away from the car stuff. And that's why the love, the love of cars is always going to be there for people like us. But we just, our priorities yeah. change on what we do with them as we get older and go in and out of different social scenes. I think if that's fair to say. I mean, yeah, I, I I get that, man. I'm just like, I don't know. I, just, I don't know what a Type S, so I can't say. <laughs> I still I, I still have my O2. I love it. I don't drive it very much, and it's probably for the better, um, you know, because it, it is an old car, and sometimes when I drive it, it feels like an old car. Right. And then I get it. Yeah, I get it on my Ridge Line, which is the Bud Light pickup trucks, and. You know, I notice how comfortable it is and how quiet it is. And, you know, it's boring, but it'll get me where I need to go. And it hardly costs me anything to run. So, and it's you know, comfortable. I'm probably going to get, and it's very comfortable. And it's quiet. I, I've driven, you know, what's, the thing about that truck is I bought it in September of 21. Uh, no, I, I, I leased it for the first year. And then I had, I drove to Colorado and back from Southern Castle, so from, from LA to Denver. I made that round trip three times in, I want to say, 10 weeks. Mm-hmm. And it was completely unplanned. I, I, it just something turned up. And yeah, dude, that car, these, these new cars, especially these Hondas with, with, the, with their uh, safety features and, and all that stuff, it, it almost drives itself on the highway. It does, yeah. So, you know, I, I, can't, I can't really knock it for that. There's... So, well, yeah, I mean, I, it's, I don't know, man, I can't see myself getting rid of my car, but I, I contemplated it seriously not too long ago. So I guess no, you can never say never. Yeah. And I, and, you know, I, I have that little Z and I've had that for less than a year and I'm already thinking about selling right. it here within probably the next six months. You know, I'm going to do a show at Bear Jackson in a couple months and then kind of, right. you know, cause I don't, I don't need it. It's fun. Hardly anybody has one. You know, it didn't cost a lot. I can sell it without, you know, breaking the bank. And it's just time to free up some of the garage space for what? Who who knows? Who cares? I just, I guess I just don't really need that yeah. fun little car. I mean, it's 63, 64 horsepower. Slow as all get out. It's hot as hell in Arizona. Mm-hmm. You know, it looks cool. It's fun to take on running errands. But, you know, at the end of the day, it's yeah. just. Did you see? So we're, we're recording this just during basically Monterey Car Week. Um did you get a chance to check out the two Acuras? I saw, I saw the, the Type S. Uh, there's like a special edition Type S or something. For the Integra, that. the HRC Integra. Yes. Yep. Yeah, the HRC Integra. I don't know what else that they, they showed. Was was that like a, an, another electric vehicle? Yep. There's an EV. I'm looking at it right now. Um, and I could, I could probably share my screen, but I don't want to. Uh, it's another EV concept. It looks like a... Um, smaller i didn't see i mean it's got 23 inch wheels i saw in some photos so it's the wheels are a lot bigger than they look so i would mm-hmm. imagine this thing's probably the size of like a porsche macan or something or not the what's the is it the macan is that the the smaller suv yeah the macan is the compact crossover yeah it looks like sort it might of, be that size smallest, yeah. it's smaller than a zdx yeah. and a zdx is smaller than an mdx so Yes, and like the previous EDX, no one's going to buy this new ZDX. You don't think so? 
No, I just no, dude. I I, I don't. I, I'm I'm a. I'm really pessimistic about my EVs. I think Honda is going to lose their ass right. on electric vehicles. I mean, Toyota said I don't know a year or two ago that you know electric vehicles aren't going to be the future. Um, you know, mainly supply chain issues, infrastructure. And so they went the hybrid route, and it turns out they're probably going to be right. I mean, Porsche has backtracked on their all EV future, um, so their projections. I think some of the um, what is it the the other the, the European the German manufacturers they're backing off on that. I mean, even Ford cut back production. So, yeah. I mean, look, <laughs> all of this talk, and I, I just like I said, I don't, I don't see it happening. So, and I think Honda's, I think Honda's making a bad decision and in, in, in sort of going in as as hard as they are with that. But you know, that's that's my opinion, um, and you know, I have nothing to lose by being wrong. So, <laughs> right, you don't have any skin in the game. You don't have any investments that are going to wet the bed I, on you. No, no, dude. I, I need to. Uh, I need to. I need to start doing. Uh, I need to. I follow this Instagram and Twitter page called the Pelosi Tracker. So I just need to get as, bu- as much money as I can, and then just copy those investments because apparently that's what people do, and they make a bunch of money doing it. The Pelosi Tracker. Yeah, you know, I don't. I don't necessarily 100 percent disagree. Uh, I think that right now the the big pivot should be back to hybrid. And just improve hybrid technologies. Yeah. I think the smart you know? automakers are still have that as a focus with kind of playing around with the EVs, of course. I think the ZDX is an incredible, I think it's a nice looking machine. It probably performs pretty decent. Mm-hmm. It's expensive. And I think that's the thing. I mean, when you compare it to like the Rivian, right? The Rivians are $100,000. Those trucks and the, the R1 and the R2s and the new R3s are coming out. And those are awesome cars. But I think the, the cost... Uh, of entry for a lot of these EVs just isn't worth it. And then, of course, no one knows it's going to happen in November with the election because, mm-hmm. you know, it's one side wants to do one thing, one side wants to do the other thing. And I think the reality is we all look at it. There's no way the grid's going to be ready by 2035. You know, we're behind China significantly with production. Right now, they're twofold of us. And then by the time we get to 2035, they're, I think they're going to be three or four or five much, five times the production of uh, electricity. So I don't think it's going to happen, but you know, I, if I had the money, I might lease a ZDX, but it's, you know, it's on the very bottom of a list of things that I would do if I had money for that, to be fair. Mm -hmm. But this thing was, it looks pretty cool, this new concept, but who knows, right? I mean, who knows? Yeah, I, like I said, I, I'm not, I'm not in the market for a new car. And and again, I, I guess I have a, I have a general bias against electric vehicles. Um, but because I, I don't get the idea that a lot of these electric vehicle fanboys are actually like car car guys. They're not. They're, they're not. not. They're nerds. They're just they're uh, transportation so, people. They think transportation is cool. You know that's what I've always yeah. said about Tesla. Like I know no dirt toward Elon Musk, and I mean his cars are on every corner, like literally every corner. I know they are here. They're probably there too. And yep. He's not a transport. He's not a car guy. He's a transportation guy. And I know he's had. I think he had. You know, he's had some nice cars. But I would still argue that those are. Mm-hmm. He's a transportation guy, not a car guy. First. Yeah, I just you know I don't know. Most Again, people don't care. Don't That's take the thing. my word for it because yeah, yeah, they don't. I mean, look, I um, you know don't take my word for it. I I clearly have a bias, so <laughs> it's uh, it's what it is. I'm just you know because I I. When Gavin Newsom, um, tell us, tell us about what? Gavin I Newsom. I him. mean, you're a, you're 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 a comedian, but you're very uh, outspoken on a lot of things. And tell us about you know, Gavin. What do you think about this thing he's doing now, where all of a sudden he wants to clean up the state? What's that all about? Oh, uh, those are that. Well, I think. Well, look, you know, pay me cynical, but that's just optics altogether. You know, they they could have done this the whole time. What he what happened was, in my opinion, that the Supreme Court bailed him out. So, the pre, so there was a there was a recent Supreme Court case that um, that argued, you know, whether or not municipalities could ban camping in public places, right? 
And it, I think the case was somewhere out of Oregon. I, I don't remember. Is that like I, I a tent city, to some of the, well, tent city origins or something? Yeah. So what happened was there was a city, um, there was a city that banned camping in public, right? And so someone sued uh, because, of course, and they said, "Well, this law um, it 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 negatively impacts the unhoused is the new term, mm. uh, the unhoused." So, and this sort of is is it kind of works into how the left views things. So. If anything has a, a disparate impact on a group, then it is uh, by nature, I guess, discriminatory, right? It's it's prejudicial mm-hmm. in that matter. So, you know, never mind that when you make a law saying that you can't camp uh, on public grounds that, that, that aren't designated for camping, never mind that like you or I couldn't do it, right? It's just the fact that a vast majority of the people who are going to be impacted or going to be homeless. And so that's their case. Well, the Supreme Court just said that that cities can ban camping in public. So what that did, I think, was um, it struck down, I think, I think it, um, I think it, it all but sort of struck down a previous law or a ruling of the Ninth Circuit Court of Appeals here out here in California. It could have just been a California district judge too. I don't know the details, but in California, what that's at some point between when I moved to Los Angeles in 2013 and now, um, the court said, "Well, you can't confiscate homeless people's belongings. You can't tell them to get off the sidewalk. You can't." You can't ban them from camping on public grounds. And so that kind of worked into the problem that we have today. Right. So sure. when I first when I first moved to LA, you can go, you can drive around and yeah, you would see a homeless guy here and there. You might even see a tent here and there. But if anything, you would drive, you would drive under uh, at an underpass and it would be completely clear. The sidewalk is clear. And I want to say at some point after these court cases went through that you started to see these tent cities pop up uh, at these underpasses. Um, and, you know, it, it got worse over time. I, I remember that there was this one, this one point. It was on Venice Boulevard. It was the underpass between Sawtell and Sepulveda. And on one side, excuse me, on one side, you couldn't walk on the side. You had to walk into the street to get around this. That's how bad it was. Right. And then on the other side, it was completely clear. And it was that way because one side was Culver City and the other side was Los Angeles. Interesting. And Culver City said no. Right. So I know you can't do that here. And then eventually, they just to- uh, took over the Culver City side. So- what what they were saying, what the what what Newsom was saying, and, and a lot of you know the mayors and, and and city officials were saying is, well, our hands are tied. The court said we can't move these people anywhere, right? And so now what he's doing is saying, hey, you need to clean this up. And I, I do I do believe it is a direct result of this recent Supreme Court ruling. Well, because we we know it's a problem, we see it. Um. We experience it, but he could have he could have done something about this a few years ago, but he, but he didn't. And so now that it's election season, um, I, I think he's doing this um, for optics. You know, just like when he went out to clean trash at whatever you know site he did, I'm just like, dude, this is bullshit. I'm like, <laughs> it's not stop. The, that's not the Gavin <laughs> you know. <laughs> well. <laughs> It is the Gavin I know because he would do this shit. Yeah. Okay. You know. Yeah, he would. He would do it. But also, like, look, we we voted the guy in. Mm-hmm. We voted the guy in. We recalled him, and then when it was, t- it was, we had the opportunity to recall him from office. We did it. Actually, California, the, the, the recall vote. He got uh, he got a higher percentage of support during the recall vote 
than when he originally got elected. So, you know, it, it just like the guy, look, the guy's so full of shit. I don't think like, and again, this is me being optimistic. I don't, I don't think the guy's electable on a national level. Maybe he thinks Yeah, I just is. don't. But again, Kam- Kamala, Harris, Kamala Harris is running. I mean, you, you, know, guys, media, you guys are producing some, some winners over there, man. Uh, you know what? Because when I see it, oh, I'm, like, I'm like, okay, so she's probably going to, and it would be catastrophic to the party to do it at this point uh, here in, in mid-August. But I could see a scenario where they drop Waltz because he can't escape all the stuff that he's you know been caught lying about for 20-something years. Mm-hmm. And then all of a sudden you look over and Newsom's trying to clean up his state and look like the the nice guy. Because I know there was conversations a few months ago. Um, and again, this is a car podcast, but we could talk about whatever we want to because we both have NSXs. We both have cars, nice cars. <laughs> yes. Um, yes, we do. You, you, yes, we do. Um, but there was talk that maybe he would be swapped in for an aging Biden. This was even before Biden did that first press conference because apparently everybody who knew, like really knew that this guy was on the decline, but the American people had no idea. Yeah. So it just looks like to me, next door neighbor, Arizona, I'm looking at him like, I haven't really heard anything good about this guy in 10 years. And now he's trying to clean up these streets, you know, the, the, the state that has syringes for people in San Francisco. And I've heard San Francisco's like kind of turned their thing around recently which is great. Um, but I've also heard that maybe a district in San Francisco is nice and the rest of it is complete garbage. So yeah, I just wanted your, your opinion on that because as well, someone, it's, San Francisco is literally full of shit. No, like literally full of shit. Because you can just shit on the side. Was this, is it San Francisco? Like, I past- well, was it San Francisco or LA or maybe it was Portland or Seattle, but where was the, where was the famous, um, shop owner that came out and, Sprayed the hose on the lady. Oh, that was that was San Francisco because she didn't want to move in front of his. That was shop San Francisco. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, he. he yeah. I. Th- I think he got charged with he got something. Charged, yeah. He might have gone to jail. Huh? I don't know. I just thought it was funny because he probably voted for this. Yeah. You know, I. I. I'm. Inter- I'm entertained by people who get what they vote for, and then somehow they, they. I mean, then suddenly they don't. They don't like what's happened. I'm like, dude, we we called this years ago, mm. but now you don't like it. So. Yeah, that's San Francisco. Um, I mean, from what I understand, like Union, what is that, Union Square? It's like downtown San Francisco. That place is becoming a ghost town. Mm. Uh, flagship stores are leaving. Uh, vacancies, retail vacancies everywhere. I remember, I, I want to say there was a there was a law that was passed. You know, I've lived in California now for 20 years, so I, 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 don't, I don't remember the specific timeline on this, but they said in San Francisco that you could be nude in public. No. Just so long. I don't know. It's just, it's it's weird. Like you could be nude in public. But there were sort of weird exceptions to being nude. Like you couldn't sit on a restaurant chair or something. i like it was it was weird, you know? I just thought it was I thought it was a, a weird exception to happen there. Um but look man, it's um this isn't even the, the California that I moved to in 2004. And I thought this, look, I, I grew up in Kansas. And so out, I, I came out here and, you know, look, man, I was, you know, for all intents and purposes back then, I wasn't even political, but I, I think if you just talk to me back then, I'm not that much different, but I was like a Kansas liberal. And then I moved to California and even 20, 2004 California was more liberal than I had imagined. And, um, how would you describe yourself now? I think we, um, I don't know. I think I'm, I'm probably a few months away from becoming a white nationalist. (laughs) (laughs) Depending on who you talk to, but depending on what the definition definition is that like, yeah, which, which definition on the right side or the left side definition of white nationalist? Well, I exercise, I want to tell you, I exercise the, uh, I, I exercise the white supremacy of waking up early. Um, I also practice the white supremacy of showing up to work on time. Apparently this is not my definition. This is from the Smithsonian, the Smithsonian. So, um, you know, I set, I set my, I set my alarm in the morning to hate crime. So, but fair. Yeah, dude, I don't know. Like I'm not as, I'm not actually as, as 
right leaning as some of my friends. You know, and the thing is, like, I don't have a problem with with them um, because you know, I I can sort of, you know, we sort of disagree at the margins, and we can actually have a discussion about that, uh, which is important. But what's yeah, it is, and then we we can we can do that. And I think um, you know, there's even some like guys. Even comedians, where you know they're they're still a little left the center, and we can still have discussions about stuff. But dude, there's just some there are some people who are so strident about their politics because politics is some politics has become a religion to them, mm-hmm. and so and to to disagree would be heretical, and it really is. It's it's like it's like talking to a religious zealot, and there's there's no headway to be made. Uh, and you know, again, that's not that's not a lot of that's not a majority of the people. That's not even a, it's it's not you know. A, uh, it's a tiny percentage, a but they're the people. ones that are barking. It's a the small loudest. percentage. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Like I mean, I look. I have neighbors, and I'm pretty sure you know. I have this lady across the street who has one of those stupid ass signs, you know, in her yard that says, "In this house, we believe that love is love." It's signed. Uh, mm-hmm. It's just that fucking bullshit. Um, but you know, like it, it never comes up as a, as a topic of discussion when we see each other out on the streets. So, um, yeah, I, I don't know, man. Um, but I, I just, it's what's, what's weird to me, but I think California will get worse before it gets better. Mm. You know, and, and again, that's, I know that's fatalistic. I kind of look, we, we, we also, recalled our district attorney down here. So Gascon is the LA County district attorney. And so since he got into office, um, there's been an increase in violent crime and thefts, um, retail thefts and stuff like that. And I believe some years ago they uh, they passed Prop 47, which essentially changed uh, what it was to be a criminal. So, for instance, uh, it's it's it said that any retail theft under nine hundred and fifty dollars mm. per occurrence would simply be a misdemeanor where you would receive a citation. So, in that regard, law enforcement oftentimes won't even respond to it. Well, here's a here's my question you on see? that because. Oh, I see those videos on social media just like everybody else does. And uh-huh. I get furious every time I see them. It's like the nerve people yeah. have to ransack these stores and grab whatever they want and they leave. But there's no one, to your point, there's no one stopping them. There's no one willing to stop them. Okay. The police won't even touch them. So how do you know if they've grabbed $900 worth of shit? So if you add everybody together, everyone's probably running out with fifteen to $1,800 worth of stuff. Depending on what store they go into, it could be a lot more than that. And that's why yeah. your state, everything is locked up. I saw earlier, it looked like it was Walmart based on the price, and there was spam. Have you seen that? Where the spam, each each can of spam was wrapped up in like a plastic container. And I go, that has to be California somewhere. Yeah, it, it would. I know it like in Colorado. Colorado actually has a very similar law, but their threshold's even higher. It's like $2,000, which is insane. I mean, Colorado's, Colorado's become retarded in its own right. And it all has to do with Denver. Because if Colorado is an interesting place, if if you go outside of Denver, you, it's it's like a bunch of hippies who love guns. You know, they love their guns, they love their freedom. Um, you know, like you could go somewhere, like go to a restaurant, and there'd be this like purple haired they them with six piercings in their face, like sitting next to like a six four, two hundred and fifty pound jacked, like lumberjack looking guy who homesteads. You know, and has a has a wife who stays at home, and takes care of her seven kids. Right. So complete opposites. You know, yeah, and then they just kind of coexist. Yeah. But you know, then De- De- Denver Denver rules uh, Colorado politics, and it's it's kind of gotten stupid. Um, ever well, oh, yeah. I mean, maybe it's accelerated since about 2016. But um, but yeah, going back to Gascon, so like. You know, there, there there are certain forms of crimes that got reduced to misdemeanors, some of which I think might even include some sexual assaults. Jeez. And we were I forgot who the 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 dis um who the the LA County 
DA was before him, but we were called Gascon. There was enough signatures to do it. And it wasn't just this right-wing thing, which is funny because that's what they asserted. They said, oh, it's this far-right conspiracy. No, there was a lot of, there was a lot of Democrats mm. who got behind this. And so he got recalled and um, we couldn't take him out of office. So at that point, I'm thinking, okay, well, we couldn't get Newsom out. We couldn't get Gascon out. So I just, I, I just, I figured, I, you know what? I'm kind of done. I just, like, we, we can't get these guys out of office, despite what we're, we're experiencing and seeing with our own eyes. So, you know, I'm just in California. I'm, I'm going to be here for the foreseeable future because I have a house here. My, my job, um, I'm anchored here because of my job. Um, you know, I do comedy here. Um, so, you know, the best thing for me is, you know, my, my kid is in pre-K right now. She, she goes to a Montessori school. And so for kindergarten, we're just going to homeschool her starting in kindergarten. And we'll homeschool her for, for as long as we can. It's going to be a hybrid homeschool uh, program where she, there's a site she goes to uh, where she's in class for two days a week and then three days a week she's, she's at home. And so I'm going to be teaching her, uh, everything. And she needs to know, which is going to be great for me because I'm going to, I'm going to love uh, relearning algebra. Uh, you're going to have to relearn <laughs> everything, but one thing you're not going to have to learn is cursive. Yeah. You know, I still know how to write cursive. That's, that's the funny thing. Like I haven't written in a long time and I'll just start writing it. And I just, I just know how to do it. But I always thought it was weird. You know what? I've been accused of having really good handwriting. And so because I had a, a, an Asian mom, she made me sit every every night after school and practice my penmanship. And it was excruciating. It's, it's something I'm never going to forget. Sounds because awful. I go, Why do I have to do it? Mm -hmm. It was fucking stupid is what it was. And so I had to practice my penmanship every night until she was satisfied with how it looked. You know? And I'm like, I have better handwriting than you, mom. But like, why are you critiquing my handwriting? <laughs> you know, so, but yeah, I'm, look, we don't need cursive. Um, you know, maybe it was funny. I can, I see cursive as sort of being this niche skill. Now, yeah. Where, yeah, if, if you can do it, and I, and I think calligraphy might be, might fall into this, but I, I can imagine at some point if it's not even happening already. That if you have this niche skill or you have this beautiful penmanship and someone pays you to write this beautiful letter in cursive, you know, you can, someone can make a living off of that because it, it's just become, it's, it's become like extinct in a lot of ways. It's a trade skill yeah. now. I can't, I don't know about you, man. I, I could pick up and start writing and my hand just blows up after like 20 seconds and my words get smaller and they start kind of curving up because my hand's starting to cramp up because they're not used to doing it every day like we did when we were kids. Yeah. Yeah, dude, I, <laughs> I, see, I see people's handwriting now. And I'm like, dude, do you have Parkinson's? Like what, what is, <laughs> like, what am I looking at? Right. <laughs> what, what am I looking at, dude? Because I, I mean, I still write things by hand. Um, but I always, I print, I've been printing since college, actually. Do you do the, I, I, once I, do you do the man thing where you print in mostly uppercase? Uh, when I'm filling out forms, yes. Yeah. Every time I'm writing stuff, I, I'm kind of psycho. My wife says, cause I kind of mix case. Sometimes it's upper and lowercase. I'll have an uppercase E and a lowercase E in the same word in the middle of the word. Yeah. Uh, but mostly uh, it's just all uppercase. And I think I, my dad used to write like that. And I think that's where I got it from. Just looking at him. No, it's because you're yelling. What you're doing is when you're writing in, in all caps, I'm screaming, you're yelling. Yeah. I, I permanently caps yeah, lock. Screaming. Yeah, my brain's got the caps lock. Yes, you're on, yeah. you're on caps lock. So when you're filling out that form at the DMV, you're, you're upset and you're there. So you're writing in all caps because you're like, my name is. And so you're it's your way of screaming at them. But yeah, when I when I fill out forms, I, I write in all caps because, or uppercase. Um, I think it's because it's easier for people to read. Um, but you know, if I'm writing notes, like sometimes I'll, I'll write, um, I'll write jokes out or something. Um, I, I write however I write. Cause I know I can read it. I don't, if I don't need anyone else to read it, I don't know the shit sure, yeah. how it looks. Yeah. So, but yeah, dude, what's going on with your stay, man? Like how long have you lived in Arizona? 
10 years, almost 10 years, like 10 years and like oh. two months. Where were you before that? Michigan. Oh, you're Michigan. Okay. Yeah. I was Texas, right, dude, yeah, Texas dude. raised and then I uh, lived in Michigan first part of my adult career. And then I've actually, you know, uh, lived here for, for 10 years. So. And so you like, you like Arizona, you're going to stay there? I think so. It really has nothing to do with the culture. It's a weird culture here. Um, it has more to do with the wide open roads and the fact that we're, <laughs> we got big wide open roads. So it reminded me of Texas growing up. Uh, not, yeah. not nearly as congested and we're five and a half, six hours away from everything. Right. San, San Diego, LA, yeah, Mexico, Las Vegas, you know, quick flight to just about anywhere we want to go on this side of the divide. So yeah, it's just, it's nice. It's hot. Yes. I was talking to somebody who lives in Arizona and they're like, yeah, we just, uh, we just don't leave our houses during the day for like, well, that's the Half thing. Half a year or whatever. It's not- it was like that in Texas, right? People are like, how do you live in this? I go, well, you just don't work construction. You know, just work a regular job because back then everybody was going to the office, right? And I just work 11 to yeah. 8, not too early, not too late. And that was just my, my life. Same thing here. Just don't work outside because it's hot. It fucking sucks. No, oh, dude, I can't imagine being a home inspector in the summer in Arizona. I mean, it's a little easier because the houses are newer. Um... But uh, there's this uh, there's this home inspector at least post I come across on on Instagram every once in a while, and he's he's really popular. He's like this sort of like I don't know. He's he's, he's this I don't know. I can't I can't really des- describe him. Something some words come into my head. I don't know if I should say them. But, um, but yeah, it's like 110 degrees outside. He's got that big like hat on. He's wearing long sleeves and long, you know, he's just wearing like cargo cargo pants and stuff. I'm just like, dude, I can't. You got to protect he, and your I body. I think you mentioned how much he's hard. Well, yeah. That's yeah. And actually, I think if you wear light, if you wear light colors and long sleeves, it's actually cooler. Um, but he was telling me, I, I think he mentioned how much he charged for an entire day. And I'm like, dude, there's no way. There is no way that I could charge like $495 to do this huge ass house. And it takes eight hours. Like I just maybe that's what the market maybe that's what the market is, and I know the cost of living out there might not is not as high near as high as where I live here in Redondo Beach. But like, dude, I did a I did a um, what was it two days ago? I inspected a four unit apartment building in Santa Monica that was I think five thousand six hundred square feet, and it had a pool which I've never seen. So you got these buildings in Santa Monica, and they, you know there's there's just not much space out there. Right, and this this particular this particular uh, complex had a pool, so I didn't know I had to inspect that, but I just I did, I ended up doing it anyway, um, and um, so it it had a it had a crawl space too, which I don't think Arizona has, so I had to crawl no, under this house. Yeah, I had to crawl under this house too, and it took me five and a half hours, five and a half hours, and I charged. Fourteen hundred dollars for it, so it's so bad right. to like. And it, look, it was a pain, and it was an old house, but like to work in a hundred twenty degree heat and make five hundred bucks for an inspection that takes all day. I know I, it probably makes me sound a little stuck up, but it's like it's no, I can't not do at all. It. I mean, that doesn't. I mean, I <laughs> I heard that, and I'm like, she, you know, because we have someone come to the house to inspect it. It's going to cost us three, four hundred dollars. They're here for thirty minutes. That what? <laughs> yeah, when we get appraisals and 30 stuff. Thirty minutes. Yeah, yeah, dude. My my inspections are three four hours minimum. Yeah, I'm on site, so you know they get a nice long report. But still, do I just like I said, I'm stuck here, dude. I'm I like the hottest it gets where I live is probably ninety, and it have it, I might get maybe a six or seven days worth of. Uh, 90 degree temperatures where I live. Now, when I go work in the valley, yeah, it's, it's 105. Mm-hmm. But when I come home at night, let's say at five or six o'clock, the marine layer is rolling in, it's going to be 65 degrees. And it's like that year round. It's at night, at, at night, it's probably between 50 and 65 degrees year round at night. So, you know, I've just been Californicated in that way. I've just become this, you know, this really big pussy about the weather. You know, I'm not, I'm not like, 
I'm not like hard like you guys, man. Dude, I was out in Kansas back in June. Well, that's and, different. They got the humidity. Well, it, the mold growing on dude, everything. It was like not. It was a hundred degrees with ninety percent humidity. Right. And I was out there for a wedding, my friend's wedding. Right. We we've known each other since sixth grade, so that's nineteen ninety. That was thirty four years ago. So I've known him for thirty four years, and. He finally got married. So I was like, well, I got to go see this dude get married. So finally, it's like the last one. So I get out there and I just think, man, like he would have an outdoor wedding in June, by the way, outdoor in June. And so the wedding is at his house because he has this like 4,000 square foot house in Salina, Kansas. And... It's on the river, has its own private river access. It's got two acres of land. So, yeah, you know, why not Sounds have nice. a wedding at your house? Right. It's, it's a beautiful yeah. house, man. Yeah. It's a, and, and it's like one fourth the price of my house here in Redondo Beach. And so the wedding was supposed to start at four o'clock sharp. Four o'clock nears, everyone starts filing down to the yard. And once, once, it, uh, once people started filing out, it started to rain. <laughs> Mind you, it's a hundred degrees. Well, it's raining, and it's sprinkling, and so we're okay. We're like, okay, dude, like let's go. This is not getting any better. So everyone files down. We all get seated, and as soon as, as soon as the wedding party starts coming down, it starts pouring, and oh, there's a thunderstorm. Oh man! And we're like, okay, well, we're just gonna go. We're just gonna get through this. So everyone comes down. It's 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 pouring rain. There's a thunderstorm. We all have our phones out just to like record how much it's raining. And I gotta say, man, I think that from from when the wedding party got to the altar to you may kiss the bride, it was probably fifteen minutes. So yeah, I mean, good on them for that. But yeah, it was it was like a thunderstorm, and the, the wind started picking up, and so because we were amongst trees, and so the trees started blowing real real hard. And I was like, "Is there going to be a tornado?" Because that's the only thing that's missing from this equation. Yeah, Kansas. Kansas tornado. Yep, yep. During his fool's wedding, and you know how light people are, man. So they're they're just you know they they something happens, and they they always have to they always have to like make something out of it. Right? So like, oh yeah, you know. You know, um, I heard that when it rains, it's a good omen. Oh, or, yeah. It's the, the devil's wedding, birthday or some crazy shit, right? Yeah. I'm like- No, it's fucking raining. I'm like, yeah, you know you know what cultures believe that? Those cultures don't exist anymore. Right. <laughs> <laughs> They're no longer with us, you know? So, no, like, I would rather have no rain during my wedding than there to be a thunderstorm. So, yeah, anyways. Let me ask you this. But I, I was just there, dude. I was like, yeah. What do you think- what do you what? Put your little your hat on, right? Your little conspiracy hat. He, what do you think of July thirteenth, Butler, Pennsylvania? Oh, dude, did you see that the FBI I've seen all released of it. the body? You've seen that, dude. I've seen everything. They, all right, so they cremated the body already. So, all right, there's a lot of questions, and um, and I think all of them are legitimate. I don't. I don't, I wouldn't go as far as to say that the government did this, right? Although it's pretty shady. I think that, but also like for there to be that much incompetence happen at the same time for this to culminate in an attempted assassination, that is really suspect. And so, you know, you hear all the stuff. I I think that I, I think that the the administration sort of purposefully put Trump in harm's way by assigning him substandard security, which is completely p- plausible, right? So, and from what I understand, a lot of the social security detail working that day aren't even social security or even not social security but uh secret, secret. service i know yep. <laughs> secret <laughs> service yeah so all the secret service people <laughs> uh secret service people who are on detail that day aren't even secret service they're um like dhs um yeah outsourced employees. bodies yeah 
Yeah. And so, and like the, the, and what made it worse was that like those interviews by the head of the secret service, why she just gave this dumb ass excuse. Former. Like, dude, do you realize that saying nothing, you, you were like saying nothing. You're saying everything. Would be more to your benefit than say, oh, well, you know, just we didn't have anybody up there because the roof was sloped. And then there's literally pictures of a sniper on a roof that might be more sloped than the one that- Oh, it was. Um, it, was it was significantly more sloped. Dude. And so, yeah, it, it's, yeah. And so, you know, just the amount of incompetence that had to happen and it culminated in that. Very suspect. And the fact that this kid has no online footprint, like nothing, yeah. zero, no social media, nothing. Uh, I think the government probably is hiding something about that. But, you know, the guy had, uh, the guy had, he was a re registered Republican, donated to Act Blue. And, you know, he, it, I, and people were saying it was like, it, it, it's an open primary. So in that state, so a lot of times people will register for the opposing party and vote against the candidate they don't want, which is which is very plausible. Nate Silver admitted to doing that actually mm -hmm. uh, in a recent interview with Megyn Kelly. You know, so he's like, "Yeah, I'm a registered Republican where I am, and I did that because I wanted to vote against Donald Trump." But I'm like, "All right, dude, that's that's like good for you, but that's fucking that's retarded." But yeah, man, I. I like, how did they get, like, where did this guy come from? I, I wouldn't be surprised if, so you know, you know how, you know how the, the Meg Whitmer, the kidnapping case against her fell apart Yeah. because 11 of the 12 people involved were, were working for the, for the feds. And so the guys, the, the, the guys to that, they, they indicted on conspiracy. They, they all, they all had their charges dismissed. Right. And so I'm just wondering if there was some form of entrapment, maybe some feds kind of like led this guy along to 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 do this. That that would probably if if I were to believe that there was direct government 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 involvement, that that's probably where it was. So and then there's this stuff about how, you know, some Someone from the FBI or, or one government agency made trips to, you know, they tracked his cell phone. I don't know. I don't know how believable that is because, you know, people put anything on the internet these days, but I don't know, dude. I don't, I don't know, but it, it's real fishy. I don't think we're going to get answers. Yeah. That would have been my follow-up question. Do you think we'll ever going to actually know? No. Yeah. No, dude. Like we still don't know what happened with the Las Vegas shoot. Right. That's true. You know, people were bringing up le legitimate questions about how one man like sucks all of that equipment up to his room that high with that much ammo. And then he's moving that gun from window to window. Like we don't, we still don't know the answer to that. Like what happened there? And um, we're never going to find out. We're not going to get the full answers to, 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 uh, to this Trump assassination. Attempt. I, it, it just yeah. won't happen. Yeah, I mean, I so no. I admitted, admittedly, didn't really pay as much attention. Um, like come voting time, I kind of look into who's going for what and who actually believes in what, and don't just you know watch the mainstream media. Like I'll get online and start reading. And uh, but once that happened, man, I just became so like locked in uh, as a moderate, just kind of stepping back and kind of looking at things and like, all right, well, what, what, what is this doing? What's this doing? Okay. This doesn't make sense. Why? And I wouldn't say obsessed, but I became super interested in it. And so I'm always catching stuff mm -hmm. and vetting things and you don't, you never really know everything, even things you think, you know, but you know, two or three, four different sources will come out with the exact same thing. You just kind of look at it and it's, it's too, um, it's too crazy to have been on a coincidence to have been on accident. Uh, to me, somebody obviously wanted this to happen. I don't know if we're ever going to find out who that somebody or some bodies are. You know, I don't, I think the immediate thought is it's the Democrats, it's the left, but maybe that's what they wanted you to think. Right. I mean, it could be just some, some bipartisan deep state control that they've been pulling the trigger or pulling the trigger isn't a, a good word, but, uh, 
the puppet masters for everything that's going on. And I don't know if we're ever going to find out who it is. Um, you know, was it the government? I'm going to say yes, but the government is like, I'm looking at a softbox up here with a grid on it, a giant one that represents the government. There could be three or four squares in this softbox with a grid that is, that are, you know, pulling all the cards, you know, the Biden, no, hell no, there's no way that guy knew about it. You know, it's just somebody somewhere, somebody's somewhere responsible for it. And I don't think we're ever going to find out, you know, who, who Well, I, I think if, if, I think Biden is proof that, you know, the president doesn't run things. Right. Which we all knew, but that's well, really well, damning we did. evidence. And I think, I mean, even Trump to, to a, an extent as well. I mean, the, the, the administrative state, or as they call the deep state worked really hard against the guy. Yeah. And then it has come out. I mean, it's come out that um, I a think lot of Millie stuff has come withheld out. some in, then withheld Crazy. stuff from him. Um, well, well, that that whole Russia thing was a complete fabrication. Yeah, yeah, that 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 involved the 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 machinations of of you know the FBI, the CIA, and stuff. So, and then now with Biden, it's like who, there's a like there's a legitimate question: Who's running the country? Right. Because he was D, you know, he's he dropped out of the race. So like if he dropped out of the race, then he shouldn't be he shouldn't be uh he president. And so who's running things now? And and um you know, it is Well you can argue based I don't know, on I don't his, have, I don't, based on his health, who's been running the country? Well, it's probably Jill and Obama. So like be Barack Obama's third term, Jill Biden probably. Because, you know, she was she was she was uh, seating herself next to world leaders at some of these meetings over the last few months. Isn't it interesting we haven't so, heard anything from her or about her in weeks? Nothing. 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 What, nothing at all. What do you think is going to happen November? Did you just, no, go ahead. Go with that and then answer that question. So I don't... What I was going to say, did you see that one video where people thought that there was a Biden body double because he was so much taller? Than everybody, have you seen that? The deep, That's crazy. The deep right is convinced that there's two or three or four different Bidens, and there was a rumor. Oh, I there bet. was there was a belief that Biden well, had already passed. You know, but uh, I don't think that. I, I don't think anyone not, don't believes that. that anymore. But that no, was no. that was a thing. Uh, so to your question, I don't. I am unsure as to what happens if Biden were still in the race. I would say Trump was going to win because um, he was he was ahead in every poll. The enthusiasm for Bi Biden was in the tank, and strategically, and, it, and I, th I think it's accepted. It's pretty well accepted now that strategically it was a blunder on Trump's behalf to have that debate when he did. It should have been after he secured the nomination at the DNC to debate him, because at that point. They couldn't just drop him and install Kamala as the nominee like they just did. And so Kamala's made it sort of a 50-50 race, which is astounding because she was for a long time the least popular vice president in history. And this also considers that Aaron Burr shot somebody. So <laughs> least popular, she got maybe 2% of the primary she vote had, when she ran for president. She had zero of the primary when she the, ran for president. She didn't have one she had primary zero vote. zero delegates. Yep, not one. Not one delegate. Yeah. And so like suddenly now she is the, she is the, uh, the, the face of the Democratic Party. It's, it's insane. It's weird. And so I don't know what's going to happen, yeah. to be honest, yeah. because- we don't have we don't have COVID uh, to to give excuse to some weird election shenanigans, um, and so like I'm I'm seeing polls polls are changing every day, every day. And then what are the real and polls from, versus the polls that they want you to think are real? It's just like there's right. It's hard to tell what's going to happen based on that, right? So we yeah we don't we don't really know. I mean some polls are 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 more credible than others. Right. But I mean I think Biden was ahead by a lot. I think he was ahead by like five or six points um for for most of 2020. Harris is up by the margin of error. So I think 
I think even Harris might be up less than Hillary was up when she was running. And so nationally, from what I understand and and, and, and been hearing from like pollsters and people who, who like are into this stuff, they, th- they think that nationally the Democrat needs to be like four or five points ahead consistently nationally. Um, now, as far as battleground states, again, I don't know, dude, because Georgia has gone blue the last few elections. Arizona's turned blue. I don't know what to think about Arizona. You guys have two Democrat senators, a Democrat governor, and pol- Trump is pulling in some polls um, ahead of Harris. So I don't, I don't know what to think about that. I don't know what to think about Georgia. Um, Michigan. Like Michi- um, uh, Michigan. Trump's not going to win Michigan. Um, he, he could win Wisconsin, maybe. He's definitely not going to win Minnesota. So, so my you know, family's I, I said, my family's from Minnesota. Not, I've never lived there, but I still have cousins and stuff there. My mother's still there, and I asked her what she thought about that, and she goes, "Well, she really hasn't thought about that much, but it's it, she's not thrilled either." At the same time, so it looks like I saw on a map that only six, like six of the counties voted for this Waltz guy, and everybody else didn't. But they had so much pool, that's how he ended up getting in. So. For whatever it's worth. Yeah. Well, that's usually how that works. Yeah. It's so it's a I, I, like I said, I don't know. College. <laughs> yeah, and which is fine. Like I don't have a problem with the electoral college because again, when you look at the, the vote the the vote difference uh between like Trump and Biden, let's say this last uh the what back in twenty twenty, almost all of it was between like California and New York. Like if you look at San Francisco, San Francisco County, Alameda County, which is Oakland, LA County, um, and New York City, that's almost the entire vote difference. You know. And so um, so really what happens is that those four cities control uh an election, a national election, if it were uh, you know, strictly a, a, a direct democracy. But um yeah, dude, I don't know, man. It's really like I I think Harris could very well win. That's the thing. Like she could be our next president, which would be it would she would be by far the dumbest president we've ever had. Ever. She's <laughs> dumb. Every time she speaks off the cuff, dude, she sounds like someone who didn't do her homework and was told to write a 500 piece pa- a 500 word paper and she has like a 150 word vocabulary. Right. So like I just like and I think that's why they're keeping her off the media. Right. She cannot talk she can't, she well, cannot there's, talk next to There's the defense that I've been reading and people are like, "Well, she's too busy running the country. She shouldn't have to speak for people to people." And I'm just like, "No, they're they're hiding her. They don't want her to speak because every time we see her even in her own little conventions, it's like, is she does she have a drinking? Is she drunk? You know, what's going on with her?" And yeah, I don't know, man. I I don't know what to. I can see, I can see Trump winning in a landslide, and I could see Kamala winning as well, but not in a landslide. But it would seem it'll super a, weird a, if she won. It'll be but a very. I could see her doing it. If if Kamala, there's a lot of illegal activity going on. So I'm not. I don't have trust in the system, and I don't want to sound like you know stolen election Trump in 2020. But I just, the more you dig into it, the less faith you have in the system. And I think it's the man well, listen, against the it, machine. It's, it's not just, it wouldn't be just Trump because the Democrats cried foul and in 2000 yeah. with um, Gore v. Bush. They also cried foul after Trump was elected. Like how many, 16, how many yeah. stolen election, like, you know, stolen election, election stolen, like right? Russian collusion, Russian collusion. They like, they, 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 they not, did nothing but cry about that for four years. And even in 2018, you had people like Amy Klobuchar, who was, you know, she she was um, she was talking about the the drawbacks to m- voting machines. Like there was a, I think there was a documentary on it where some Democrat politicians were were trying to sound the alarm on on voting machines, but suddenly in 2020. When Republicans and say, "Hey, there's there might be something going on with these voting machines," and like suddenly they're action election deniers. So, you know, I, I think Trump should have long, long ago 
abandoned the stolen election narrative. Stolen election narrative. He should have just been like, well, "You got you lost, dude. Just but accept are, are it." Are you and move seeing on. all the stuff that's coming out now about it? Oh, as far as how how unsecure those things are. Although the Dominion software um, has been proven. That's the software that a lot of these states didn't want to use and that software was something like 1.7 million votes were switched or didn't get registered correctly. And then Georgia's under the knife, Arizona's under the knife, Michigan's under the knife. So whatever. Let me ask you a simple one to get out of here on this. Uh, mm-hmm. Do you think, because yeah. this seems to be something that, to me it's an obvious answer and I don't, I don't know how anyone, but I'm going to ask you, do, do you think people should have an ID to vote? Oh, absolutely. You should at least be able to verify that who you are. Right. Right? So you should be able to verify that you live where you're voting. You should be able to identify that you are who you say you are. Uh, you should be able to identify if you're an American citizen. And I don't know why that's controversial. I don't either. To me, that it's, just, be it's controversial. so easy. It doesn't make any sense. No fucking sense to me. It's like... Anything you vote on, you have to, you get one vote. Like who wants chocolate ice cream? Raise your hand. Who wants vanilla? Raise your hand. You're not allowed to raise your hand twice. Okay. Vanilla wins six to four out of chocolate. But if you can just sit there and keep raising your fucking hand, then what's the whole point, right? Well, and, and also if what's funny is the, the, the excuse that Democrats use for not wanting voter ID laws, it's so condescending and racist. And it really is. People don't have the money for an ID. Like, oh, well, like, well, well, black and brown people, they can, like, dude, IDs are free, by the way, for the most part. And um, I think it was, I think it was Ami Horowitz. Ami Horowitz went out into, like, black neighborhoods, uh, like New York uh, or wherever. Just He went into some cities, went to black neighborhoods, did street interviews. And he asked black people, he was like, hey, do uh, you have any trouble getting an ID? They're like, no. Like, well, what would you, like... What would you say to somebody who said that black people can't get IDs? <laughs> They're like, oh, that sounds ridiculous. I don't, I don't know like why they would say that. So I like I said, I think it, I mean, it's it's uh it's state by state. I mean, you can't, I don't know if, if the federal it government state can by even state. pass. Yeah. Yeah, I don't think the federal government has the power to pass like a a national voter ID law. So it has to be state by state. And so, you know, again, that's kind of where it, it and those laws would probably, well, they would matter the most in these swing states, in the battleground states, places like Wisconsin, Minnesota, Pennsylvania, uh, Arizona. Like there needs to be, um, you know, I think Virginia, the, the the governor of Virginia just said that paper ballots, uh, all votes need to be done by paper ballot. So, and oftentimes these are these 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 laws and and um, policies are set forth by the Secretary of State. So. You know, it's a state by state thing. You know, yeah, Kansas might Kansas might uh, pass a voter ID law, but it's like, okay, well, you're gonna be red anyway. It doesn't look matter. Right. No one cares. And so, yeah, I think it's I think it's just strange that it's even controversial that you should be able to identify yourself to vote. I have to identify identify myself for everything. Everything, like literally everything you do. Everything. Everything I do. Like, there's even laws that I have to have my ID on me when I'm going for a walk. Oh, yeah. And an officer can ask yeah. you for your ID at any time. If you don't have it, maybe you get a ticket. Maybe they haul you in. Yeah, it's it's weird. I don't know why it's controversial, but it's somehow it is. And we have to, we're sitting here talking about it. But yeah, dude, I don't know. It, it, yes, you should have an ID. But that's just, that's just my opinion. Apparently, that <laughs> apparently, uh, you know, a lot more people disagree. So, you know, maybe I should, maybe I should vote three or four times. <laughs> right. In those places. Well, he is a white supremacist practicing a comedian, David Hahn. How can people, yeah. uh, how can people stalk you if they really want to? Uh, you can find me on Instagram. Uh, my Instagram handle is jokes on Dave. Uh, you can find me on Twitter too. That's at jokes on David. Um, X. I keep getting shadow X. on Twitter on X. On X, um, I keep getting shadow banned on Instagram because I uh, I keep calling people retarded, and uh, I can't stop I can't stop vehemently agreeing with women on on abortion. So I, I keep getting shadow banned. <laughs> 
you know those social media networks man they're they're always leaning one way or the other well yeah that's why I go to, I, I was told that like, I have, I have some comedian friends who were telling me this, just go on X to say, just to say uh, the most vile shit you can think of because they'll let, they'll let you. Yeah. They'll let you. So, yeah. Let you. So when's the next time you're in California, man? Uh, I don't know. Well, I, I don't know when I'm going to be on Arizona. So the only way I'd be on Arizona is if I, uh, find any shows out there, but if I do have shows out in the Phoenix area, you'll be the first one to know. Appreciate it, man. Later. All right, Jay. Hey, man, it's, it's been good talking to you, dude. Let's do this more often. We should. The Hard Marking Podcast. A little bit of cars and so much more available anywhere you get your podcast or check it out at hardparkingpod.com.